I'm thinking, so the show must be starting. The breakdown starts now. Clearly. Welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson. I am happy to be back with you all. I survived my trip to Europe. Um, and if you didn't know what I was doing in the cold open, it was a reference to Donald Trump's unhinged interview last night with Sean Hannity, where he said that he declassified everything and there was no process. And if he thought it, because the, if he's the president, he can think it and it becomes declassified. Some type of telepathic abilities that I was unaware of, Rick Wilson, existed in the Constitution or federal law. I learned something, I guess, last You know, night. it's in the Federalist Papers number 666 <laughs> that um, the president shall, in fact, have the psychic ability to reclassify any document he chooses. Uh, it, it was, you know, look, we're now at the point where he's chasing some very, um, some very absurd legal rabbits uh, to this yeah, case. And I sure. think that was not really his best argument. Not in the least. And if you're his legal team, you know that they were going like, oh God, not again with this. He's the world's Can worst you just client. just shut the hell right. up. Right, he's the world's he's the worst, worst client. client. He's, a worst client. he's a terrible liar. Yes. And he's a terrible legal client. I know. You can't be both. No. You will not, you will not do well if you're both. No, and he's cheap. He doesn't pay his legal bills on top of it, on top of it all. You go through all of this and then he still doesn't pay you or he pays you. You know, you just fraction. go through the list of you, you go through the list of, 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 of the attorneys he's had that he's he, he runs through attorneys like he's throwing them through a wood chipper. And and at this point, as I as I not very facetiously say anymore, he's getting these people at strip malls now who specialize in like slip and fall lawsuits. Yes. And parking these garages, not, which is real. Right. Real. These are not smart people. No. These are not, these are not, they're not, when, when they send Trump's lawyers, they're not sending their best. No, that's exactly right. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> they are not sending their best people. Um, and and it, he seems to surround himself with these flunkies. And and yet, you know, they, they're they still those hangers on, I guess, thinking that, I don't know if they're true believers or what, but last oh, night's but, interview yeah, with look, Hannity look, was I mean, Cash Patel, Cash Patel is desperately hoping that Trump will be, will, will be reelected so he can be the, the director of national intelligence or the secretary of defense or, or CIA, some other or CIA, some CIA chief. I mean, and, and I think there is a, there's a strangely persuasive logic to that. Why a lot of Republicans are, are holding back, even though they're very clear on what has happened yep. and they know these documents are classified. Man, the wind is, I'm in New York tonight. The wind is blowing like crazy. <laughs> um, but the, these attorneys know; these attorneys know very clearly that Trump is lying to them, yeah. and 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 they and they they're having trouble making the case to the special master who they thought was going to be a Trump stooge. Yes, uh, and it was turned out to um, be a by the book guy. Well, there's a shocker. Well, he you know, is people from who Brooklyn. Spend a lot of time criming <laughs> are disappointed when other people don't let them crime. Right, and that's happening right, right now with you well, know just, as, well, as a judge... wise friend of mine said the other day. Yeah. When they selected Judge Deary, they had no idea how hard they punched themselves in the dick. Like, <laughs> well, okay. you have you have to have one first in order to feel anything if it's uh, if you punch it there. So that did I you think see that, that photograph of Trump today sitting, look, looking like he's wearing some sort of like massive skirt? No, but it wouldn't surprise me. God knows what he's got trying to hold all of that in when he can't stand it's, up. Straight, I think I think he had a girdle failure of some kind. <laughs> Probably. And he probably oh clapped God. his hands and said, Pascal, you are yeah. now my Spanx boy. Come to me. Gird me. Is Pascal still around? Is he's he still trying around? to be around. He's he's out of one of the super PACs now, no. one of the Trump super PACs. Yeah, where God they all know. knows what's going on. Well, the super PAC that's under investigation for massive fraud by the Department of Justice, perhaps? I believe that would be the one. Oh, oh okay. Oh, speaking, yeah. speaking of all, weirdly, all of that. Weirdly, you know, weirdly, seven hundred million dollars went went to media companies, partly controlled by Jared Kushner and 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 the Trump family. 
Well, what could that have been? Right. What could have possibly happened to all of that money? I can't imagine. It's a mystery. Well, the impenetrable mystery of the ages. Well, the Department of Justice is going to solve that mystery because they are on the case. And last week, while I was over in Germany, uh, I saw that you know you had forty people subpoenaed, including Boris Epstein. We oh, talked yeah. about this uh, last week briefly. Couldn't happen Before to a I nicer left. person. Yeah. And so th that case is moving along. And also, there's another case that's moving along. In New York City yesterday, there was a hell of a press conference yes. by the New York Attorney General, Tish James. Now, everyone has been waiting with bated breath of what she was going to do. And since Alvin Bragg basically shit the bed on the Trump organization. That's a technical case. legal term, I know, yeah. but it, it is actually very accurate that he shit the bed. Well, yes. I got it from the Rick Wilson book of law. So, <laughs> of course. Um, and so. By the way, people, just to look back on yeah. one thing about impenetrable yeah. mysteries, yeah. that is, from what I've heard, Melania's Tinder screen name. Oh, God. Um, but moving on. <laughs> moving on. Um, so a lot of people were were upset about Alvin Bragg passing on on prosecuting Trump and the Trump organization. They only got Weisselberg, and it, it's still a very limited uh, limited conviction, but a conviction nonetheless. Right. A couple of the prosecutors resigned in protest over Alvin Bragg's refusal to move forward and charge. Um, but now we have the attorney general, and Tish James doesn't play around, clearly. And during her announcement... She that was down. that was a press conference full of receipts. Oh, I mean that that it felt almost like a, like a, a Law and Order episode. Okay, like it, you could not have scripted that better. And so, no, um, it felt like it felt like the, it felt like somebody finding a field full of baby seals and clubbing them to death. It was brutal. <laughs> it was pretty brutal. Uh, the only thing about it, though, I think the audio is completely kafukada on this show tonight. Oh, well, I mean, I can hear you. I think everyone can still hear you. So um, we'll, we'll power through it. Uh, the, the thing about it, though, is that she... We'll power she, through it. Yes. She ticked off a bunch of the examples of the f financial fraud that Donald Trump and his organization have been involved in for quite some time. And if you've been following this, and it's a hobby for some people because it's just it's an ongoing chronic problem with Donald Trump that he's been able to get away with this for so long. But Michael Cohen basically laid this out in 2019 when he when he testified before Congress and she gave mm -hmm. Michael a shout out and said this was a, this this investigation started investigation started because of a lot of what Michael Cohen provided because he was the only insider that was willing to give up the goods and explain how this organization works so here we are in 2022 and Trump is in some trouble now the thing that's frustrating though is that it's civil not criminal and a lot of people are like why right. is that because the attorney general doesn't really do that. Um, they, she will, like she said, she will make a criminal referral to the uh, IRS and to the Department of Justice, the Southern District of New York for potential criminal violations and let sure. them prosecute that. But there is something in New York, Rick, and I know that you know this because you used to work for Giuliani. There is a death penalty, a corporate death penalty in New York where she yes, could basically is. dissolve the Trump organization and banish it to Boogieville. <laughs> and they could no longer do business in New York City, which I think would be a crushing blow to Trump. Well, the, the key part of that banishment is the provision that they would forbid him or any of his companies from doing business with any bank <clears throat> registered with the New York Department of Finance. Which is everyone. <laughs> That's every bank in the universe. <laughs> it's everyone. <laughs> um, it's funny. I was, uh, I was at this conference and there was a representative from a Deutsche Bank mm -hmm. there that I just kept thinking to myself, mm -mm -mm. boy, oh boy, Deutsche Bank, you guys uh, really, really are knee deep in this, neck deep really in this because they were his chief finan financial uh, loaners because nobody else, no American bank would loan him money. So, you know, you know. shout out, shout out to two, to two institutions, three people in particular, um, Kurt Anderson and Graydon Carter from Spy Magazine, who called Trump's bullshit in 1991. 91, and that's right. Tim O'Brien from Bloomberg, who has done astounding reporting to the point where Trump sued him and yep. got him uh, non-disclosured. So we can't talk about what he discovered about Trump through some shenanigan that happened. But they have all covered this story for years. I wrote about it in my first book where I went to a hedge fund guy in August of 2015, and I said, if Trump gets in, you know, it's going to be a problem. He's a billionaire. He'll have, even I believed it back then, right? Yeah. 
he's, he can outspend everybody in the field. And this guy who is a very, very wealthy, serious person leads back and goes, Rick, Donald Trump is not a billionaire. He's like, yeah. I am a billionaire. Donald Trump is a clown living on credit. Yep. James just showed that case so beautifully. And the yep. fact that he's engaging in like the worst stupid fraud in America, like my toilet in this apartment is worth 70 oh, trillion right. dollars. Right. And, right. And, 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 and because I'm in a good mood, you know, Trump national is worth $47 billion. Right. right. And she and and this is what Michael Cohen talked about. What he did, he yep. inf inflated when he needed to and deflated to avoid taxes. That's, That's fraud. Right. And another person who was an intrepid reporter on this for decades was David K. Johnson, who yes, was David someone. K. Johnson for sure. He, he's won Pulitzer prizes. He's got a new book out now. I think it's called The Big Cheat, where he documents a lot of this um, ongoing fraudulent financial activity by Trump. So people have had Trump's number, but he's been able to escape this because people. You know, it didn't really matter as much. Ah, yeah. So what? Who cares? But once he ran for president, it it started to matter. And you know, and he he. Well, and look, I, I think it's important, Tara, that that this also wraps in the entire gigantic crapulous enterprise of his family <laughs> as well. Yes. Because yeah. you know, Don Jr. and Ivanka Trump had become the faces of of the Trump enterprise going forward. Don Jr. was going to build, you know, these big uh, hotel properties around the world. Ivanka was going to design them. Mm -hmm. Eric was going to stay home and play with his drool bucket. You know, the, <laughs> the, the, but it, they, they drag the entire family into this thing, which is well deserved. Yeah. It also proves my point that Tiffany is the secret mastermind and will destroy them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they don't even poor Tiffany. Well, she might she might not be uh, so upset about the fact that no one cares about her. So because I'm she's borrowing an apartment to do. I'm borrowing an apartment to do the breakdown today. That squeaking sound you're hearing, yeah, is the dog that is here has found a toy. Oh my gosh! Well, that's pretty cute. And um, if we can see the dog at and, some point, and it'll you make it better. You're not allowed to see what's happening right now because Michelle Kinney is chasing the dog down the hall. <laughs> God bless Michelle. She's a woman of many talents, including a dog whisperer. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, while that's going on, let's run a clip because, of course, with all of this news going on, um, Lincoln Project has been rather creatively busy. So let's run a clip. Bit. Of, just a little bit. Call. Let's call. It's the clip is called "Uh Oh, Donald." Today, we are filing a lawsuit against Donald Trump for violating the law as part of his efforts to generate profits for himself, his family, his company. Uh -oh. The complaint demonstrates that Donald Trump falsely inflated his net worth by billions of dollars to unjustly enrich himself and to cheat the system, thereby cheating all of us. Uh -oh. When you trigger a civil case, that opens up a lot of mechanisms to do discovery. A lot more subpoenas are going to get issued, and like you said, a lot of financial data is going to be investigated, and more important, there's going to be deposition, depositions taken under oath. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, someone um, added you know, to Tish James's uh -oh. uh, comments to to the uh, Whispers ad because she said that, you know, someone someone on Twitter, of course, one of our lovely social media followers, they added Tish James to one of our Whispers ads about Trump being in trouble, which I thought was brilliant too. Um, there's just so much material. And we also have a, a we're going to debut an ad exclusively tonight uh, on the breakdown that's going to run out in Pennsylvania in a, in a little yeah. bit. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you were on MSNBC earlier, or they showed a little clip of it. We're going to show the whole thing. Um, great hit, by the way, on MSNBC Thank with, with Nicole Wallace. And I'm sure LP will post that too. It was also a, a unique moment. The, the Rick Stingle and I have been on God knows how many shows together. First time ever in, in the studio person. at the same time. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. It's uh well, speaking of weird, just as an aside, when I went last week to that conference, it's the first time I've been on an airplane in two and a half years since COVID. So it was all like I was overwhelmed with it. And U.S. planes don't make you wear masks anymore. So I still mask when I'm in crowds of people. I have yet to get COVID, by the way. Thank you. Um, and Me so it either. was really weird. It was, yeah, I, which is amazing because you travel way more than I do. And I made it through not only that flight, but I made it through Oktoberfest in Munich, 
without getting COVID, which is why my voice sounds like this. If anyone is wondering, I'm still recovering from that, but it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. And on top of that, I had to host a three hour live radio show on Sirius XM for Michael Smirconish this morning. So with all of that combination, if anyone's wondering, that's why I sound like this. So after this show, I will go back on vocal rest and get some, some serious rest this weekend and be back full speed uh, next week. But that's what's going on. Hey, Oktoberfest, worth it. Oh, what? I've never sung Ein Prosit so much in my life. It was <laughs> fabulous. And I wore a traditional dirndl, of course, because- Oh, hello, I saw that. Act. I saw that business. Setmeyer. Yeah. My family is German. <laughs> my grandparents were German. Uh, my grandmother was Italian, but my grandfather was very German. So I had to represent us in Bavaria properly. There's there's some pictures on, on social media if you guys There it see. is. Anyway, uh, back to business. So someone who is not uh, cheering and celebrating is, again, Donald Trump, because there's more legal news going on. It has not been a great week for him. The uh, Constitution's been kicking Ooh. his ass up and down. Um, the three-judge three panel, the 11th Circuit in uh, Atlanta, basically struck down half of Judge Cannon's, this Trump idiot judge that basically engaged in judicial activism, telling the DOJ they can't look at classified documents while until a special master does and all this nonsense, just kind of not really strong legal reasoning. Well, the 11th Circuit reviewed it because obviously the DOJ right. appealed it and they were like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. And Trump, has, his legal team has not even attempted to show that he has a need to have these, uh, these documents. Their defense is the, they don't have one. They literally don't have one. So the 11th Circuit said... DOJ, go back to doing your work. Here's, you know, the 100 documents that they wanted to um, get back so they can continue investigating. They're allowed to do it now, um, which is why Trump went on Hannity last night and, you know, uh, and tried to defend himself. But instead, he just admitted you know, to look, so I, many I, more crimes. I, 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 yep. I mean, look, he is he is. He has always had a lot of tricks. He's always been very feral and cunning and escaped a lot of traps. But right now, the combination of terrible lawyers, rising panic, and Ron DeSantis is, you know, out rubbing his rubbing his his face in it every day. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. Trump is not is not a happy camper right now. No, he's not. And I feel for him. That's really terrible. And I, I'm so sad for him that oh, he's having a bad week. Well, it not only did the Eleventh Circuit hand down a loss. But this, the, the special master, Judge Deary, who is from Brooklyn, by the way, and if anybody knows New York City, Brooklyn and Queens, eh, okay, you know, really, there's a little rivalry there between the boroughs. But, um, you know, this judge is not bit. playing a little bit. This judge is not playing around. He's been around the block a long time. Um, you know, he, he's a FISA judge. So he takes classified information very seriously. And he basically said he admonished the Trump team because, again, they have yet to explain why this was why they believe these are declassified documents there's been no process nothing to demonstrate that it, that it that that existed so he's basically telling them until you have a real legal explanation i'm going to take the side of the government and assume that these are classified documents right. it's it's just it people Which are just the to watch way it stuff. would be handled in any other case yes that's right the special master aspect of this is a complete delay tactic and just a simple waste of time. Like there, it, it's all that it, that it is. And Judge Deary, even though he's doing his due diligence and he might take a little longer to go through whatever he needs to go through, but he's not giving, he's not cutting Trump any slack or his or his. Uh, no, there's, legal not, there's team. no, there's no, there's no slack here. No, not at That's all. Right. And and That's thank right. God, and they continue so, to get their ass handed that to them in court. Spot? Um, not yet. We have one more thing before we get to Pennsylvania, Rick Wilson. We oh, January sorry. 6th. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. I'm very I excited. Know, I know you are because it's a fantastic spot. And so I don't blame you because Peter Coyote voiced it as, uh, again with his beautiful, lovely, booming voice. But not yeah, yet. The great Peter um, Coyote. Yes. We're going to keep people with us to wait for it. The next thing we want to talk about is January 6th because since yeah. the last time we were together, we now know for sure there's a new hearing next week. It may or may not be the last hearing. Some are saying it is, but I, I find that hard to believe given how many unanswered questions there are, but they're up against the clock. They have to get going writing the actual report. So um, the big news out of that is Ginny Thomas has now agreed to voluntarily participate in an interview yes. with the January 6th committee. Um, 
Jenny Thomas is the. I have a suspicion. Go ahead. I have a suspicion it's going to be. Do you know who my husband is? Uh, Of course. Do you know who my husband is? Right. He's Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. For those who don't know, and that's a problem because she's a cuckoo, and the things that she was texting and what she believes, QAnon stuff. Barges off of you know the coast of Cuba and Gitmo was where the Biden should be. She was texting Mark Meadows crazy shit about overturning the election and making sure that left wing liberals don't take down our country. I mean, she is whew, out there, and her proximity to Clarence Thomas, some of his decisions on cases that came before him, all of it is questionable. But I had Hugo Lowell, <clears throat> our buddy Hugo, on with me on the radio this morning, right. and he believes because he's been covering this. He believes that there may be some legal exposure for Jenny Thomas on the fake electors aspect of this because she was all up in it with Boris Epstein and, um, Wait, and John Eastman. I think we Eastman. lost Tara. No, can you guys hear me? Got gotcha you now. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, she was involved with John Eastman and Boris Epstein um, with the fake electors plot. So um, there may be some legal exposure for her. And it's uh, and, you know it couldn't happen to a nice a nicer <laughs> organizer of a of a of a fascist assault on our capital. No, I know. Um, it, it will be interesting to see because it is a video deposition, so we will get to see it um, at some point, whether it's done in time for the hearing or not. I'm not sure, but um, I think that'll be very interesting to see her disposition and how she comes across. Now, Liz Cheney, Jimmy now since she's stencil district. <laughs> finds tinsel distracting that's funny um so liz cheney has been out on the circuit now since she got defeated in the primary she is liz cheney on un- unleashed as we said over the summer um she gave a talk recently at aei here in washington and she is not mincing words and i'm looking forward to what she has to say during the committee next the next committee hearing and she had some really poignant things to say Uh, about what's at stake here. She is not mincing words. Let's roll it. Bit by bit, excuse by excuse, we're putting Donald Trump above the law. We are rendering indefensible conduct normal, legal, and appropriate, as though he were a king. And now, Donald Trump has been suggesting, not even subtly, that any legal action against him could result and violence. I think if it happened, I think you'd have problems in this country, the likes of which perhaps we've never seen before. I don't think the people of the United States would stand for it. Our former president is apparently now suggesting that if he is prosecuted, his supporters should stand up to our constitutional order and the rule of law. Stand up and through whatever means are needed, prevent his prosecution, prevent the application of the law. What kind of problems, Mr. President? I think they'd have big problems. Big problems. I just don't think they'd stand for it. It is hard to see this as anything but a direct threat to our Constitution, to our Republic, and a credible one at that. One can only wonder, is this where the Republican Party will go next? The prosecution is inappropriate because MAGA will violently oppose it. I don't know if Tara's frozen or I'm frozen. It's a mystery. Well, folks, I think we lost Tara for a few minutes here. We'll see if we can get her back as quick as we can. Um, that idea that 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 the one six commission um, has left us a roadmap for how we think about the risk to the to the country is very clear. Um, and I think we're going to go ahead and and and. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to the last the last hearings. I hope I hope they continue to do this. I think they're going to issue a report that is going to shock a lot of people, and I'm hoping I can soon get a uh, uh, break some news. Hopefully next Tuesday on another story about the one six committee that is hopefully going to be kind of a big deal. Um, but with that, folks, we've lost Tara, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the ad we put up in Pennsylvania today 
uh, going straight at the rising tide of anti-Semitism uh, that, that Doug Mastriano is a part of in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, he is he is one of the most pernicious people, I think, running for office this year. And I think this ad really puts him into per perspective. Uh, and with that, we will go ahead and roll that spot. Pennsylvania's Jewish community faces a rising tide of anti-Semitism. An alt-right gunman took 11 Jewish lives in an unimaginable slaughter. The gunman was radicalized on Gab, a social media site where Nazis, anti-Semites, and racists spread hate and terror against Jews. So what did Doug Mastriano do? Joined Gab, hired them, paid Gab's CEO for advice, bought Gab ads and followers. Mastriano knows what he's paying for, knows exactly what Gab's audience is. They're not just Nazis, Klansmen, racists, and crazies. They're his base. Pennsylvania has proudly protected the religious liberty of every faith and creed since our founding. Now it's up to us to protect Pennsylvania from Doug Mastriano. The Lincoln Project paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Pretty, pretty tough one, folks. That was that, that was one that, uh, that that is extraordinarily impactful, we think. And we're looking forward to seeing Doug Mastriano's reaction to being called out for exactly what he is. Anyway, folks, we will see you again on Tuesday next week with more hijinks, frivolity, and various technical challenges met and overcome. I wish you all the best, and I hope that you are all keeping up with your voter registration status. Please go to your state or county voter registration site, uh, your, your your supervisor of elections, and ensure that your, vet, your voter ID is correct, that your registration is correct, that you haven't had your party switched on you mysteriously, that's happening in a lot of places, and that you are ready to get an absentee or mail ballot as soon as you can. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night, and we'll see you again on Tuesday.